What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. Target Lori is occupied today, so stuck with me for the market recap. In this video, we will go over what the buyers just got done today. It's pretty meaningful and what they need to get done in the near term to remain constructive. So without further ado, let us get into it. Nope, that's just a Nike thing. Okay, um, so starting off with Spy here. All right, so this was a very notable bounce, and yesterday these buyers broke back over the prior daily no change level of 537.45. What I mean by that is just that the most recent breakdown from this area of supply was not yet negated until yesterday when buyers found acceptance back over 537.45. This is a very notable bounce. You know, at this point now, there's a lot of space for a higher low to be set over 510.27, but the best case scenario would be for these buyers to maintain over 537.45. Why? Because typically what should happen when you enter an area of supply, if the sellers are going to remain strong, is they should defend either this low, right, the value area low, or the point of control. Now, especially considering how this move is straight off of the lows. So to drive this far into this structure right off of the lows is a really good look such that they've made a decent amount of space to potentially hold a higher low over 537.45, which would be the best case scenario. The next best case scenario would be to hold over this high volume area over here or higher volume um, area over here. You can see how there's not really that much volume traded from 534.68 to about 540.20. So if they are gonna get into this low volume area, it would obviously be a bad look to fall back from this high volume area and then come all the way back down here. So the best case scenario for these buyers then would be to hold over 537.45. If they can't over five, three, hold over 537.45, next best case scenario would be to hold over 534 and roughly a half, again, where this volume picks back up, okay? Anything over 510.27 is gonna be good for a daily higher low. And bigger picture, as long as these buyers are holding over the 2021 high, then this big old breakout, you know, from 2024, this move over here, not yet negated. Bigger picture, honestly, things look fine. Space for a monthly higher low. Weekly is also now, well, first we're looking for a lower high in the weekly and then looking for a potential higher low over the same low, 510.27. Uh, All right. And we do have more data today and tomorrow. So the market right now is definitely being sensitive to the data because the big question is, what is the state of the economy when the rates start? When the rates are cut and the economy is strong, this is pretty much the best case scenario. Uh, if the economy is not strong when the rate rate cuts come, you know, that would mean that as historically has been the case usually, uh, not always, but that would suggest that the Fed was late, right? If the Fed has to cut rates to fix the economy, that's not a great look. But if the Fed is cutting rates and jobs still look fine, the unemployment numbers still look okay, inflation continues to cool, then that's pretty much the best case scenario for the market, okay? Well, it's the best case scenario for the economy and the market is pretty much trying to price in what's going to happen in the economy for the next like couple quarters or so. All right. That's like a pretty, you know, more or less a, a good way of looking at how the uh, market is connected to the economy. It's not the same, uh, but they are related. Moving on to the Qs here. Okay. So Q, Q, Q. Uh, very similar, right? They have broken back over. Hang on. Let me just bring up this chart. They have broken back over the prior daily no change level, which is 454.15. So very similar to the SPY and the ES. The best case scenario now is for these buyers to hold over 454.15. Lots of space for a daily higher low. Anything over 423.45 is going to be good for one. You know, technically we are still looking for daily lower highs. Both SPY and the QQQ technically still have space for a daily lower high to be set under 554.87 for SPY and for QQQ under uh 475.55 but again like i said a lot of space for a higher low now as well all right so again best case scenario 454.15 holds if it can't then the next best case scenario would be to not fall back down under this high volume node best represented by this date range here which is 515 to 64. okay so if not over 454.15 then ideally over 452.95 Worst case scenario, but which would still be constructive, 450.02, that's the key level. Basically, after trading through this structure on this move and then moving back above this structure, if these buyers want to pick up where they left off, trying to defend off of this guy as they did over here, 
they need to hold over the range this guy uh, you know this range essentially okay this guy's range i'm not sure what i was trying to say either way i think you get it um, so that's pretty much it bigger picture same dealio right as long as they're not back under the 2021 high then this breakout is still being affirmed potentially starting a monthly higher low weekly time frame looking for a lower high under 503.52 and making space for a potential daily higher low although to be fair there are still two more days left in this week so while this candle looks pretty good right now if you have a turnaround kind of a situation this could this could look much worse so we'll have to see how the end how the week uh ends and you know just check in on the weekend video if you want an update on you know everything that we're talking about today look that's not it oh i'm in the wrong chart hang on a second here all right so moving on to the dow all right, so for the Dow, also break, breaking back over the prior daily no change level, 398.08. This is still a bunch of overhead supply. Still looking for a daily lower high first to be set under 412.01. .01. But now at this point, like Spawn QQQ, lots of space for a higher low to be set over 384.93. Anything over that is going to be good for one. I'm looking at this guy as the key reference. Not sure where the date range is, but it's pretty easy to reproduce this fella, I would imagine. You can see how it was reactive throughout all of this sideways trade over here. The buyers try to hold the back test of it as support and fail trade through it but do not get back down to the next key area of demand over here which is what supported price over here and then now they're making their way back into this area of supply so honestly for the dow you would they would the buyers would probably prefer pressing up a little bit higher to make a little bit more space to defend against 398.08 .08. but best case scenario from here is to just hold over this structure its key levels are at 397.48 and 395.27. And that is pretty much it. It's very similar, right? As long as you're holding over the 2021 high, no problem, bigger picture. Potential monthly higher low. Weekly time frame, looking for a lower high. Starting to make space for a higher low over 384.93. Okay, moving on to the small caps here. So the small caps theoretically would benefit a lot from the rates being cut, assuming that the economy is strong. Right. So the idea then is, all right, well, if the economy is OK, job numbers are OK, inflation is cooling, the consumer is then strong, then the rates start cutting, money becomes cheaper for everybody, including their debt. Right. Because the small caps carry much more debt than the mega caps. For the most part, um, at least uh, in relation to, you know, income and whatnot. So and revs. So. Yeah. So the way that I'm looking at these small caps then is we're really right back into this no man's land. So what happened with the rut was that throughout 2021, you created all of this supply, right? You break down under the supply. You try to hold over this guy over here, create this no man's land over here, right? Then you trade lower through it and create all of this demand, right? Which is really just backtesting this area over here. You create all of this demand throughout 2022 and 2023. These buyers try to break into this 2021 supply and do so but now they've fallen back under this guy right they're right back under this area here under this 20 under this 2021 supply over this 2022 and 2023 demand and so it's right back to doing this we should just expect more price action like this back and forth trade as long as we're under this structure and over this structure now that being said so far this move down into no man's land pretty much got caught up here which is exactly where this inception, the uh, balance before this move occurred, you know? So this is kind of the inception point of this big old move over here. So, so far, although this breakout has been negated, this structure is still holding price. That being said, it does look like a bit of a rising wedge. It's showing you the most relative weakness because it has not gotten back over the daily no change level, 215.38. Breaking over 211.88 was also a monthly breakout. And so finding acceptance back under it means that this monthly breakout as of right now has been negated. So first objective, 211.88. Next objective, fill the gap and then get back over this 21538 level, which is the local supply. So again, everybody is back into its local overhead supply except for the IWM. Now, to be fair, SPY actually has two areas of uh, supply above. QQQ is similar. It kind of has three small areas. The Dow has just this one. So, you know, it's all a little bit different. Technically, it's not in its overhead supply, but it also doesn't have as many uh, steps, so to speak, right? This is just one chunk over here. Additionally, 
you know, bigger picture, as long as you're finding acceptance over this guy, then we're you're trying the buyers are trying to absorb all of the supply in this. So, you know, the the, the out of all the majors that we just went over, the IWM, the small caps, they look the most different. All right, Steve. You know, the the middle child, the stepchild. Both. The middle stepchild. Oosh. Tough, tough life to live. Okay, so for the dollar here. The dollar has pretty much been contained by this structure and this structure, right? So we've been trading under this supply and over this demand ever since 2022, Q4 2022. So there's no reason to believe that there's any there's going to be any change, especially because we just rejected from the key supply again. So these sellers should be trying to step their way down, right? All the way back down to this key area of demand. On the way down, you have these two areas right here, local areas of demand that have yet to be, well, actually this one's done now. So we'll just remove that. So this key area of demand, which pretty much was the launching pad for this move over here, trying to hold that support right now. If these sellers can trade through this guy, this is pretty much one way trade. So this should be easy work for sellers. If it's not easy work for sellers, that's also good information for us, right? So for example, then if we break down from here, right, don't come down to this key demand zone and then pop right back over it. Dollar buyers can be looking for higher low plays off back test than this guy targeting here, the daily no change level. And then of course, ultimately over here okay but really very little change on the dollar space for a weekly lower high space for a daily lower high as well under uh 103.3555 okay so the vix is pretty much falling apart approaching this 1544 level this 1544 level is the level of pretty much coincides with the october low so basically as long as we're holding under 1544 then the environment is the same that we've been seeing ever since the october low which you know of course has just been a slow grind up ever since all the way back here okay so that's what i'm looking at i dang it i find these to be the two most uh key or rather i find that that to be the most key level 1544 and that's pretty much it for the VIX I guess we can go over NVD I'm not going to do all of these probably just Bitcoin and Ethereum then we'll call it a day okay so for NVDA if you're interested in this trade zone these are shared in the free uh, market update videos over the weekend so holding over this big old area of demand is definitely a good look the, the market buyers they want to you want to see the semis lead the way right you want to see tech lead the way and typically a tech uh, is strong than the semis are leading the way so the fact that mvda is staying pretty strong here looks like you know again just a potential monthly higher low being set weekly time frame looking for a lower high first under 136.15 space for a higher low over 90.69 daily time frame is technically back to being bullish higher lows established here at 97.52 and space for another higher low to be set over 97.52 upon any daily retracement you'll notice the low of the day today is pretty much right off of the back test of this structure's point of control very notable. You'll also notice that the highs of this local supply that's being tested right now, currently being affirmed as demand technically because we're over the point of control, was made pretty much right off the point of control of this structure over here. Simply how the market needs to work. You have to trade through these prior areas of supply and demand in order for buyers and sellers to advance. In order to do so, you need to trade through the key levels where the, the value begins, where the big block of volume is traded, the value area, and then of course also the point of control where the most volume was traded. So. Buyers look pretty good here. Obviously, as I was alluding to in the uh, beginning of the video, we have jobs data and then there's more. On Friday, we have more data. I forget what. Let me see here. Um, consumer sentiment. So still a lot of econ data and the market has been very sensitive to econ data before all those things that we talked about earlier regarding cuts and the state of the economy. Okay, so it's pretty much the ruling reason, so to speak, right now for the market. Moving on to Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin continues to do its thing within this forever sideways, it feels like. Um, this remains the key structure, this 21, 2021 structure over here, sitting at the prior all-time highs. The point of control of that structure is at 61003.36. Notice where these buyers are having problems right now. So, so far, the change from this breakdown has not yet been negated, unless they can find acceptance over 63222.60. And this is actually the first time where you've seen a notable defense from the sellers off of this uh, point of control. So you can see how in the past, there were many instances where the buyers we're playing defense off of this point of control of that 2021 structure over here, over here, over here, over here. You get it. There's a lot of them. Okay. Um, even over here, even though it just led to lower lows. This is the first time that the sellers have been using this uh, level 
as uh, to play defense off of. So that's notable to me. The chart on the, I mean, the daily price action trend, and we technically have set a, lo a lower high over here. And this is technically a higher low. So potentially another lower high being set here. If you break back down to a lower low by losing uh, 5, 7, 6, 5, 3.31, that would be a confirmed daily downtrend. And then the weekly, actually we, we, haven't, we haven't broken for a weekly high yet. So that's pretty much it. Basically the sellers will 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 initiate actually this this there was never a daily lower high and lower low here so sellers will make a pretty big statement here if they can lower low especially if they can find acceptance under this guy which is you know you can't really see it here you have to view it on the hourly time frame so let's give me a second here this guy which was just a little bit of balance that was built on the way up you can see how the buyers play defense off of it over here making for a major low while we were in this forever balance zone about clear battle for it over here right and then they try to hold it over here and they cannot it's problematic for buyers on the way up a back test of it sends us back into the range so far failure for sellers to come back down so it's really that's really what i'm looking at these two key structures finding acceptance back under this guy would be a pretty big red flag for these buyers okay ethereum softening as well so the etf news didn't really do much for the performance for the buyers and so now the daily no change level is much further away up at 3086.13 as long as these buyers can't get back over 3086.13 then the sellers are going to remain confident this breakdown not negated without acceptance over 2814.12 that's this breakdown from here under this prior low so and they didn't even touch that right not only that but after holding the back test of this point of control of this guy over here this guy over here which i'm monitoring because it made for these lows over here so if we're holding over this guy we should expect price action like this you can see how that structure was problematic over here and so so far a failure to get to that structure's value area high is a bit of a red flag okay that being said daily chart price action trend technically still bullish higher lows and higher highs space for a higher low to be set over 2509.58 and uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll see what the econ data Thursday and Friday brings for the overall market. And I personally wouldn't be too surprised if we were to just see some bigger picture balance. I would not be surprised by that by all. And if we do see bigger picture balance, as long as we're holding over the 2021 high, bigger picture, these buyers are fine. Alrighty. So that is pretty much it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you got anything out of that, we would very much appreciate a like and subscribe. Costs you nothing, helps us out a lot. Thank you if you do so. Um, we're doing a free giveaway right now. Oh, it's a swing report. <laughs> right, that's that's my problem. Um, the, doing a free giveaway for the swing report right now. If you're interested, links in the description below. I'm assuming everybody did their jobs appropriately. And otherwise, uh, that's it. So again, I appreciate you sharing some of your time and energy with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you soon. Farewell.